Hi, and welcome to Them Parenting, your English-speaking parenting podcast from Amsterdam. And as you already know, we are your hosts, Maren. I'm Liva. And in this episode, we will be kicking off our doula series, in which we will, in the following well, months, we'll be introducing doulas that work within the Amsterdam area and give them a little space to talk about their profession and also their specialties. But to kick off this whole series, we wanted to showcase actually how are doulas trained? What training does someone who wants to become a doula has to undergo? What elements they have to study? What elements they have to learn? And how the whole training of a doula is structured and set up? And we had the honor to speak to Joyce, who's one of the trainers at Via Doula Training. And she broke it a little bit down for us what the elements of the trainings is, what the students have to undergo, what they what the requirements are, and of course, what the quality um, security is, like how they sustain their quality. And also when they're done with their training, where they can sign up and how the quality of their work is assured. Yeah, we thought this was a super interesting interview to have and also to showcase to everyone who was asking, what is a doula? What are they even doing? And especially who can become a doula and what is the training? that they undergo. Today, we welcome Joyce Hukpula from Bia Doula training here in Amsterdam. Welcome, Joyce, and thank you for joining us here on Damn Parenting. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me on your podcast. First off, let's first ask you a bit about your own background, about yourself, how you became a doula and a trainer and how you got involved in Bia Doula training. Yeah, definitely. My journey started out into having a feel for motherhood and birth when I gave birth, after I gave birth to my own daughter. That was in the year 2000. I was already a yoga teacher and a masseuse. And then I went into pregnancy yoga, pregnancy massage. And then by the time, you know, over the years, people started asking me, oh, wouldn't you want to attend my birth? And I said, oh, I, yes, I would like to. But what do I do? From you being a yoga teacher and masseuse, people like you had this energy, people trusted you and they wanted I guess you to so. be around. That's so nice. Yeah, what a great It was compliment. really nice. Yes. Yeah. And then the first time I actually attended the birth was a friend in a hospital where at that moment in time, the care providers weren't so fluent in English. And I said, oh, I can come and be there and translate for you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I ended up massaging her and holding her hand through what was a fairly difficult birth. And after that birth, I thought, how can women and partners do this on their own when it's clear that the hospital staff is not always equipped with time, basically, to really have that empathetic support. And then another student of mine asked me to be at her birth, and that was a home birth water, which was beautiful and extraordinary with a wonderful midwife and, and her partner, of course. And then I thought, okay, I've, I have actually seen both sides of the spectrum yeah, of two yeah. far ends. And definitely this is something I would like to do. And then I started out to look for trainings and how I can become a doula. Yeah. Yeah. This was in 2008. So quite some while ago, but it's also so nice for me to hear that in, you said both ends of the spectrums, kind of, your role was important appreciated in both very different settings, yes. you could help someone. And Absolutely. that is, I think this really describes the essence of a doula. I mean, I'm the biggest advocate for having a doula. I have had a doula. I can rave about this all day, but this really, yeah, in a nutshell, this is what it yeah. is. Yeah. In a nutshell, this is what it is. Yes. <laughs> okay. Would you be able to actually talk us through the doula training program that Bia runs? Because, I mean, this whole episode is really about helping listeners to actually understand what a doula has to go through, what the process is, like what are the, yeah, just in general, what the training is actually involved in it. It's not a case of, yeah, you're a friend and you help someone along, but, you know. Exactly. Yes. I mean, I'm so glad for that question, because I think sometimes that may be the image that, one of our core skills is to hold a hand and be there empathetically, right? And you don't almost don't need a training for that. But it's so much more than that, than mm. just holding a hand. And that is what a training is about. And there are different programs in our program. It's a modular program where people can, you would always start off with the four days uh, foundational course and in-person training, before which they would have needed to read 
four books. So they do the reading on their own. And then we use the training to really integrate that book knowledge into hands-on skills, into communication, into role play, into really understanding also the physiology of birth in a deep way and connect all the dots, so to say. That is the four days of our training, which is almost like a bit like a pressure cooker because lots of things are happening and transformation almost comes about. After that training, after those four days, they go into the field and do their internships and maybe already a client trajectory if they feel up to it. And then at some point, which can be after three months, after six months or after nine months, they do the second part of the in-person training, which is the advanced training. And in advanced training, we really go into porting as a doula when birth is not like straightforward, when there's not regular flow in birth. So from the deep knowledge of physiology, they go into, okay, now what if there is a stall in labor, if there is a vacuum, if there is a C-section, if there is an epidural. So they get to know that and feel that and also how they can support as a doula in those circumstances. We really expect, because most of the people come when they've already had some life experience, even though we also have some quite young doulas and we're very happy with them too. It is based on adult learning, so they need to be independently doing the things they need to do for the certification which is many steps actually, and all very doable uh, within six months to two years, depending on what fits in their lives. And that is an internship in a hospital because we really want our doulas to be aware of what the work of people is in the hospital, which is so different from us as doulas supporting one client and the partner at a time and having the luxury almost to be there all that time, even when it's 20 hours, uh, which is very different from nurses, gynecologists and midwives in the hospital where they have to support maybe two or three people giving birth at the same time. And also they see a lot more pathology and more difficult births than we do. So it's to create understanding, understanding of hospital policies and protocols and developing the empathy also for other care providers and how we can become a team with person giving birth and a partner. So everybody's on the same page. So that's the hospital internships. And that is particular to our training that we asked that. And then there is a midwifery internship with a similar goal. And there's three client trajectories. So they have to support three clients from beginning to start to end. So that means minimum of three sessions before birth, the full birth, and two postpartum sessions afterwards. Uh, so that it becomes a rounded, full journey altogether. Then we asked them to do more reading, also our own materials. We developed a 300-page manual. So that is a lot of information for them to go through. <laughs> We help them with documents, samples of agreements, of uh, agreement contracts with the clients, set up a, a document on how to start your business. And they have to follow a childbirth education class. So they also know what is offered to clients, to, to parents, and also to build your network and know where, how to, where to refer to and do a book review. And then they have to write the whole portfolio, which includes a lot of reflection. For our training, we really ask from people that they are willing and able to reflect upon themselves and that reflective practice is actually paramount to being a good doula. And we as trainers do that all the time as well. So that's in short, maybe not in short, but. <laughs> I have one question. One thing that I was totally not aware of that they need to do an internship in the hospital. And I think mm. this is great. And mm. how is the perception of the hospital staff or how are the hospitals? How is their yeah, openness and willingness to accept doula students as observers. Is it, do you feel like they're happy and they're, and they're welcoming and they think this is something great? Because at the end of the day, these student doulas work maybe with their clients then or their patients yeah. then. So is this, you think it's a welcoming atmosphere and they are they're happy that they're there and they're accepting of them or how is the situation there? And that varies a lot. And I must mm -hmm. say it has changed a bit since COVID. And I think because the hospitals were also overwhelmed uh, with a backlog on other internships. Hmm. And also when we say the word internship, sometimes the, it might be perceived as something that costs them time because then they have to teach. Mm -hmm. If it's a nurse or a midwife, they have to teach skills. But this is really observational internship. So it, of course, it does require some time from them. But when they do accept the students, then most of the time it's very positive. And they also nice. understand 
that it is to create that working balance and that working togetherness that it is for that and understanding and to be able to be a good doula in that system. Yeah. And I guess at the end of the day, it benefits them as well, right? If they have a patient that comes with someone that they know, okay, I can have more time somewhere else because I know this woman is taken care of. They have a supportive doula partner there. Yeah. So yeah, that's nice that they can see it as, okay, we're training someone on the peripheries of our own spectrum that will then benefit us directly in our work. Absolutely. And that is what is our aim as well, is that and a, and a large part of what we do is communication. So not only communication with our mm. clients, but also communication with care providers. So yeah. we know that we're all on the same page. And you know, it's not always easy. And that's why it's a large part also of our training, because supporting clients in their wishes is our core business. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those wishes are not always positively met yeah. by some care providers or, you know, and whatever the reason is, huh, I can also have empathy for that. You know, I've had been in a many circumstances where things were not easy either for the client or for the care provider. And then I really hope that we as doulas can bridge that gap in the understanding. Yeah, kind of be the translator because when, yeah, they've seen both sides, they've had the internship at the hospital, they understand where they're coming from and at the same time they have this client training so yeah it's i can't say it is enough i'm totally supportive of this it is i yeah hearing it again it makes again so much sense to me yeah so just going back to the trainers what kind of training do they go under like how did this all begin as it were like what kind of educational background do they come from so this is an interesting question eh? because the doulas came in like 2004, 2005 in the Netherlands. The doula professional organization came about in 2007. So we're a young profession in the Netherlands. So us as trainers, so that is Marlies Felix and Jennifer Walker and myself, we became experienced doulas by doing the work and also keeping developing ourselves. We do a lot of extra trainings every year again and again. So, and that grounds us in who we are as doulas and a lot of conversations and reflections and interviews, also from international teachers. So that's how we did it. But I do believe at some point we may have to start a trainer training course. <laughs> and then, you know, because some of the stuff we learned is by doing them, right, which has its own positive sides to it. And I was already, for example, a yoga teacher trainer. So I learned group work and that. But I can imagine at some point we will start a teacher training course as well. That would be a future. Can you discuss the actual core topics and skills then that the doula, that you're training them with basically what are the fundamental elements that you are looking for to help in them? a doula yes yeah. so of course knowledge of birth so physiology and really a deep understanding of what that means and part of that is that we also teach about the nervous system because the nervous system is a large part of physiology we think of flight fright and not only the nervous system of the person giving birth and the partner but also of those supporting them because we all are on the lookout to feel safe and if we don't feel safe we have defense mechanisms at work and that is part of communication how you then you deal with that so that was where communication comes in the core skill of the doula is to be present in an embodied way that means that you can sit still without feeling that you have to do something else or that you feel that that you don't know what to do. So it's really, it's almost a meditative way to be present and then to attune to the needs of the client giving birth. And that is something that you develop as a doula if you don't already have it by nature. This is one of the skills that is hard to put into words, right? It is an experience. Uh, so some of the exercises we do in the training is to develop this skill. And that is our name is BIA. It's an acronym, being in action. So also then when we come into action, because of course you also learn a lot of hands-on skills, counter pressure, massage, acupressure, all of that, is that when you come into action, it's still from the place of being so that you don't do something with the aim or a result. So you're not result driven. Mm -hmm. Even though you do hope that your touch will be help, of course, we want mm -hmm. to be of help. But it is a subtle difference when you do that in a way that you want to take pain away rather than it is a comforting support, which may take the pain away, but it also may not. And then comes the other skill that is very important there is that as a doula, you start to become comfortable with what is uncomfortable. So you're not the fixer. 
because then everything can take place, right? And then there's no judgment because the minute I want to fix your pain, your pain cannot exist. Whereas your pain may take you somewhere that you don't know where, you know, you wouldn't otherwise have known. The pain may be a signal that something is off. And that's also what we teach when the pain is off, when it's more than expected, what can you add as a, as a doula to create more comfort? And that often has to do with position change, maybe because the baby might be in a different position. So we actually go in quite a bit into what we can call less optimal positions like posterior and acyclitic. But that comes out of attunement, not from a brainy part is like we don't start assessing birth because when we start to assess birth, we go out of that place of being in connection and attunement and being present. Wow, Does that so make sense? mindful. Yeah. Mm. Just listening to this, like this is, yeah. Like you said, this whole concept of I'm not the fixer, I'm the presence, I'm mindful. And this whole thing that we tend to do in our daily life where we reflect, oh, what could we have changed in the past? And then we always jump to the future, but we very rarely are. So what's happening in this very second? We're always looking yes. back, looking forward. Look forward. We like, yeah. yeah. And this is so nice to hear. And it, it calmed me down when you said this. Yes, I'm sitting here, I'm observing this, this very second, and I don't need to worry about the next 10 steps. And I also don't need to reflect on the last 20 steps, but I need to be, what is the situation in this very second? Yeah, yeah. that makes so much sense. I'm glad. <laughs> and one question I, I have, what are the people who, who come to you? Are What's like, mm. the, I, I don't want to say average person who comes to you but what is when you say this is usually someone who's picked up birth like you coming from a yoga background is this people who are mostly already coming from these kind of backgrounds or yeah I'm curious to hear it's so wonderful question because people come from all walks of life it's amazing we had quite a few anthropologists mm -hmm. we have people coming from technical background people coming like yoga teachers sometimes young students young people who had done a studies and then then find that the studies weren't fulfilling and then do this so they're 23 24 25 oh wow so young yeah yeah wow we have okay. People who come in when they're 50, 60, I think the oldest one might have been 70 even. Marketing, everything, yeah. like really everything. So it is something in people that draw them to supporting women, people in giving birth. I think that is the propeller uh, mm. to come into it because it's also people who've not given birth themselves, right? Quite a few mm -hmm. of our doulas have not given birth themselves. So it's not about having had a beautiful experience and then wanting to sort of give this forward or having had a bad experience and wanting to protect others from going through a bad experience. And those are valid uh, propellers, but also need sometimes a little bit of journeying to come to yeah. a point where, you know, you your own birth is not your main driver. Yeah. And you don't try to fix your own story with your clients' stories. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, and sometimes it's also okay because we also believe that every birth we go to, especially the first 25 births, always have to do with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's true. It's proven. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fine as long as you know how, how to reflect on it. Yeah. And yeah. that you're aware of what's happening and what it does to you. So there is a growth in your doula hood along the way. I believe so. Yeah. It, it sounds very much that, I mean, with very little things in life, you're done with it, with studying, you've learned everything. But this is, yeah, I mean, one of the... It's a life study. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, you're never done. Yeah. No, never. So when we're talking about being done, can you actually describe like the certification process? What is it that your doulas actually, is there anything you've already gone through quite a lot? Like they have to go to mm. the hospital, they'll be with the Verloskundres, you know, they're reading the books, they're participating in your courses. What is exactly like the fulfillment of uh, the criteria required? Absolutely. So that I mentioned before, the books, the training, the internships, the three client trajectories, and then writing reports and reflections about this. So you have to write a portfolio. And we have a special mentoring program as well. So there is one-on-one -on -one mentoring included in the training. So, and one of those mentor hours we have to really plan 
and then they have to write a SWOT analysis. So, uh, you know, what is already in them that is helpful for them and what kind of challenges they feel inside themselves that or things they need to develop for themselves and also in the outside world, what are the things that are helpful for them and what are the obstacles they may encounter. So there is a deep reflection going on there. They have to do another reflective practice and then they get their evaluation forms from their clients, the partners of their clients, from the midwives. So they're being evaluated by them as well. A book review and then they have to hand it in and then they have a certification meeting at the end of that. But because we know them, we've seen them in that whole period of time, we also know where they are at the end of it. We don't shy away when we see points where they have to develop themselves a, a little bit more. And we also, every six weeks, we host like an intervision session, which we call Recharge and Reflect. And that is either in person or online. And that's where the doulas can come with their questions as well in a more peer-to-peer -peer environment. And also our graduates join there. So it's a nice mix of students and graduates. So that's what another thing that we're really passionate about is to create a community of doulas that really uh, find each other and can support each other. So that certification process takes about six months to two years, depending on how life looks like for the doula. Mm -hmm. It kind of sounds like they um, like it's a therapy session, like that you're really having to really turn inward to mm -hmm take on this new career in your life like it's a very reflective as you're talking about it all I can think of is like oh that's just like me going to therapy every week you know because you're having to keep <laughs> I hope that them. doesn't frighten off people <laughs> no, no. no but it's like a very no, sorry. Um, how do you say it? like a cathartic kind of thing that you yeah. know it's a very and for people at such a young age as you say like with people in their 20s if they're going to do this wow that's a massive undertaking I mean it's such a chance on self-reflection I mean like wow it's It's nice. You really get to work on yourself. And how many trainings do you have that usually you learn something, but then it doesn't have to, anything to do with you as a person. But this is really yeah. you as a person learn about you as a person. And yeah. Yeah. Process. And you learn, you learn about people because... Yeah. With your clients, you also learn, okay, what makes people tick? What is their motivations? What is their aspirations? Mm -hmm. And by learning from your clients, you learn about yourself. And, and that's why it is an ongoing learning thing for, I find, for the rest of my life. Because it's the beauty of, of life, basically, what you're learning about. And maybe that's what therapy should be, is the beauty of life. How to discover that. And, and the beauty of life is not only rosy, yeah? it's also the darker and the shadows and everything that we are shy away from sometimes. We as doulas, we don't shy away from it. it Take some strength. You develop the strength too, yeah? Yeah. yeah, I'm just mm. reflecting on the some doulas that I actually know. And I'm mm. kind of thinking, oh, yeah, the harmonious feeling that when you're with them. Yeah. And that's because we don't, we, we try, at least that's the journey is not to try in the rosy, painty, unicorn picture of life, but to know that life encompasses all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were talking earlier there about meeting up every six weeks and, mm. you know, that you're sharing and then you're also talking about other, so that's your support, your continuous support in helping support the doula so that they can come back and realign or recalibrate and seek more information. Do you do other like personal development or courses as well with that? Like it's something they have to do every year or two years or so on? Um, no, we have other courses that we offer, but they are voluntary. So it's up to the doula to, to take them or not. But we do find most doulas do like to take on more courses, whether it's with us or other institutions, which is also really fine. We do promote our doulas to become member of the Dutch professional organization. The Netherlands Vereniging for Doulas. And then when you're a member of that organization, you have some requirements. And that is also about uh, continuing education, also interfacing and having to support, I think, four clients a year. So that is a mark of being a qualitative good doula when you're a member of the professional organization. Oh, so this so. is also something that a client could look out for when they yeah. check, they, they see what uh, or the question, are you a member of this? or Absolutely. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great to know. I never actually heard of that. So that's great mm -hmm. to know. Yeah, we're one of the few countries in the world that have an independent professional organization, not tied to one particular training. The other part of being in Amsterdam specifically is, as we know, through the Gementa advertisements, there's more than 180 nationalities. Mm. It's a very small city of ours. How are you addressing like the diversity and cultural sensitivity and inclusivity in the trainings? 
in the communication part, there's a lot we talk about frame of reference and where somebody comes from. And mm -hmm. so in a broader way, we train our doulas to become very sensitive to where somebody comes from. But we don't do it in a very particular way. Also, because maybe from my own background, I'm married to somebody who's originally from India, is that any generalization doesn't do justice to the individual. And because we as doulas really get to know the individual and the individual needs and wishes, it is implied that that goes for all cultural backgrounds. On top of that, when we teach in English, more than half of the doulas comes from a diverse background because those are the expats coming to our trainings and many times we also have people from abroad coming to the training so we also train uh, internationally in Europe and US Colombia our doulas are all, are all over the world uh, so then we have the mix in the English trainings it's already very diverse because everybody does come from a different background we do acknowledge though that there is particular sensitivities around racism and inclusivity in for genders so we are planning to have a separate, probably online training to address some of these subjects. Something that just came into my mind there actually was, I was just wondering, are there male doulas? There is one that we know of in the Netherlands. So I don't know, probably in the future as we're developing and growing. Yeah, it's just, it comes into the diversity and inclusivity and so on. And it was just yeah. like, yeah, well, we, we have, have queer doulas, but yeah, it's, I think it's just a different thing with having a male presence who's also meant to represent you. So that's why I was just wondering, yeah. while we discuss about like the clientele aspect of things, it was just something that sits in the back of my head of, ah, yeah, I mean, it's just a very specific gendered career as it were. Yes, but I think as the world is changing, that will start changing as well. But it's not happening as yet. But I, I think we're close. Yeah, I mean, for the rest, I was just like, yeah, there's so many different aspects when it comes to a doula and for looking for a doula and for, you know, how do I know it's the right one? So mm. I have one last question for you. What three questions should someone who's considering of hiring a doula have in mind when they're actually speaking to doulas? What a good question. I'm putting you on the spot. Sorry. We're prepared. Yeah, you are. We, we, <laughs> we, we try to prepare. <laughs> I know, I prepared myself. <laughs> it's just, I find that a lot of people uh, yeah. are asking these questions yeah. of like, hey, what should I ask? You know, and it's like, hey, it's a feeling, yeah. trust your gut. But on the other mm -hmm. side, I didn't know about the certificate that this is something you can ask for. And I mean, this is something that's important to some people where they want to see, okay, this is the requirements. I can trust that this person has this kind of background, this kind of training. But yeah, I mean, of course, like Aoife said, it's a lot of the gut feeling, but sometimes you get into the gut feeling by addressing certain things first and see how the answers and the flow is. So I think a little cheat sheet from you for the mm. listeners would be great. Well, one of the things we tell our doulas is when they do like a, a role play in the first interview, is then after the role play, we ask who was talking the most. And we always find that when you as a client, you really feel heard and that the questions your doula asked you made you talk more and tell more about yourself that you're invited to share is one of a core quality of a doula is to have that active listening skill where you feel very invited to share about yourself. Yeah, so I would say that's not a question, but something to look out for is that, mm. you know, do you feel that she is really open to your answers? The other thing, one question could be is, to ask how your doula would support you in a situation that was a bit more difficult, whether it is a choice you want to make or whether it is an epidural or whatever it is. So by asking a question like that, you can see from where she's coming from. And then according, of course, to what the needs of the birthing person is, because you cannot say, okay, you know, doula should never advocate or doula should always advocate. And what is advocating? Huh? So then it, it's the nuance that will tell you, OK, is this doula the doula for me? Well, thank you for that. Hopefully this is going to be helpful for people who, yeah, are just trying to get their heads around doula. I mean, it's very new for some of us who become pregnant for the first time. And so hopefully this is going to empower them with the knowledge of what they go through, their training, what to expect. And hopefully these three questions would also empower them to be able to feel like they're in control and that they're going to be getting and choosing the right doula for them. Yeah. And I must add, you know, 
we know from research that the click is there in the first 10 seconds yeah. and that the doula for you is the person with whom you feel safe with. It's not so much about what somebody promises, but more about what somebody is, what you feel in the exchange. And that's why I feel like a 45 minute or an hour meeting where maybe you can already touch upon some deeper feelings that will give you the, the feel for if this is the right doula. And I believe there is the right doula for everybody. Sure. Wherever yeah. that may be. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And that's the beauty of it, right? I mean, it's like, it's not box you need to tick. It's like everyone finds their match. And yeah. because we're all so individual. And this is the beauty, I think, also of this whole training that the doulas go. They all have the same base and the for the continuous studies, but then they can nuance it and they can really go into their own directions. But you as a client have the safety that they all have the same good, stable base. And then you can see, the, like you said, nuances or specialties or experience or views yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I do, you know, some practical things can also help is that when you've met somebody that they send you their contract so you can read through the contract and then the contract also will give you some la language that feels supportive or not supportive. And part of us as doulas, we actually fall under the inspection for health and youth. So we do have to have a quality system in place and grievance procedure. And how harsh that sounds, I think it's really important. I've once had a therapist and I was really not happy with her. And it felt so good for my heart to be able to go to somebody and talk about what was not working for me. So I think, you know, we as a profession are growing and we're becoming more professional and the professionalism may sound very businesslike, but it actually protects the heart of what we are. I think that is important for clients as well. Yeah. Yeah, it also highlights the quality aspect and it makes yeah. it, it's a professional training and it's not absolutely someone sitting on a yoga cushion and listening to three hours of whatever meditation you can give to your client but it's really a profound medical and science-based and evidence-based training absolutely yes totally thank you so much for joining us on this and as we said like we hope this is going to really help our listeners to actually make a well-informed decision on moving forward and, uh... i hope so too and thank you for inviting me i really enjoyed this conversation we, we did, did. i was sitting yeah. here with a big smile and my head was nodding yes 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 yeah. people can't see us but yeah when you're speaking it's kind of like yeah I get, yeah i get that oh yeah and then yeah. reflecting on oh yeah the doulas i know they are really tranquil and kind of relaxed and open yeah and they're all people you want to be around yes they're really every doula i have met and i my of course my own doula that i had at my birth they're all people you want to be around I have never met a person where I said, oof, she's a doula. Oof, I don't know how that works. Every single doula I have met, I said, please be with me and in my space because they're all so empathetic and welcoming and open and listening. And yeah, it's really a beautiful, beautiful skill. So with that, we'll say thank you. And thank you very much for training so many wonderful people into our lives as well. So yeah, we'll keep an eye out on the doula training. And yep, for now, we'll say thank you so much, Joyce. I'm sure we'll be talking again in the future about your own doula practice and what you mm. are so unique with your um, um, practice and doing. Oh, thank you so much. And really, I'm really happy you're doing this podcast. I think it's a wonderful initiative. So Good much. luck with that, too. Thank you so much. Hi. That was very informative and yeah, it highlighted quite a lot of areas I actually hadn't expected, I guess. Yeah, even I, who thought knows a lot about doulas, was very, like I said in the interview, I was very positively surprised about the depth that they go into into their training, especially the internships and the one that they have to do in the hospital. Yeah. So I was very, I mean, I was always, you know, I love doulas and I love working with mine, but I had no actual knowledge about the depth of the knowledge and in the specific areas that they have to be trained in. Yeah, so I'm hoping the listeners are actually going to be now more, yeah, feeling more secure and more confident yeah. actually with their doulas and knowing that they've actually undergone this places that they can check as well. Like, you know, are they registered then with the, the Dutch Association with doulas? I think that was actually quite eye opening for me because I hadn't even thought of that. But it was quite comforting to know that it's like, yeah, there is like an organization who actually oversees and partakes in this. So I was actually, yeah, yeah. pleasantly surprised. And also this whole interview really, I thought 
So going back a little with my sentence, sometimes when someone had asked me about what a doula is, or if I had heard other people saying or explaining what a doula is, sometimes they break it down to this is someone who holds space for you, or this is someone who supports you in your birth, or this is I've even heard this explanation of well back in the days you had your whole like women tribe around you, you had your mother, your grandmother, your sister, whatever like all these women, and since in modern society we don't have that anymore, the doula is kind of there to represent all these people. But this doesn't do any justice to what we just heard from Joyce, the rigorous training and the knowledge that they have to acquire and these internships and really the work that they have to put in. Yeah. It's not just someone going, oh, I'm, I'm, I want to become a doula. I'm just read a book. And then I, I do some yoga. So I know how about breathing. I, I'm fine. I can do a birth. So, no, no, no. It's so much more. And that was really eye-opening for me. And especially giving them so much more credit than sometimes doulas get, especially in these very short explanations of what is a doula. I was very, very positively surprised to hear about all this. Yeah. And I think for me, it was also the first 25 births. Are you learning about you or you know yeah. that was yeah. a real like oh wow okay so it's yeah I would be really interested to hear I'm looking forward to talking to doulas in uh, the future and actually talking to them about you know how was it for you and yeah what are you learning because it is yeah I mean it, it's such a sensitive not career but like you know place that you hold and that you're such mm. a, an important person and an advocate for someone in such a vulnerable period and moment in their life and to ensure that they're, yeah. you know, you're giving them the space and hopefully the journey that they actually want. So yeah, they're really, they're, it's all magical. And I just, I'm over the moon raving about, raving about them because I think this is such a beautiful profession. And I'm also very interested and curious to hear when we will cover the different doulas that we want to give a space to come on this podcast. When Joy said that there's actually a lot of them who don't have children of their own. And I'm very curious to to hear how their perception of their work or of the whole process is versus someone who's been a doula for many, many, many years, has one or more children of their own, has undergone this whole process themselves and how if the process is different, if the perception is different or doesn't make any difference. I'm really curious to tap more into that area and that topic. Yeah, especially for the 20 somethings who actually are going. Into yeah, go yeah. To why did you go into it? Like I would, I mean, it's like a lot of careers where you're kind of like, how did you end up? I don't know. One thing for me is like, how did you end up like a foot doctor or things like that? That you're like, really? Like that's the <laughs> profession you chose? But it's just one of those things that some yeah. people have certain callings and that's, yeah. So I, I'm yeah. interested to find and meet those people and have a chat with them. Yeah. We'll be having so many golden nuggets and treats for you coming in the next couple of months. And I cannot wait to share all these amazing people within our community. And hopefully you get to know them a little better and we can showcase their work and we can make justice to what magical and great work and great support they're putting out there for everyone coming a parent and growing into this whole crazy adventure that parenthood is. So with that, we're going to say thank you again to Joyce and you can find her at Bia B-I-A doula training breathe in action as she said it was which I think is really paramount for <laughs> giving birth mm -hmm. so if you need to check her out do check out Bia doula training and for now we're going to say thank you for listening bye bye